Have you ever been captivated by the endless dance of light and color in the skies above? Today we're unlocking the secrets of the atmosphere in Unreal Engine 5. From the subtle blue of a midday sky to a hazy glow of an afternoon, we'll explore how light scatters through the air, creating the mesmerizing scenes we see every day. Join us as we manipulate photons and particles to create skies that breathe, change, and tell a story. Let us dive into the atmospheric alchemy of Unreal Engine 5 and transform the way you see the sky above. Welcome back to our Unreal Fundamentals series at Ranger Realm Studios. Today, we're exploring the sky atmosphere component, a powerful tool for creating realistic or exotic skies, perfect for both Earth-like and alien worlds. This feature will elevate your outdoor levels. Let's dive in and light up the skies of your virtual worlds. First, let's delete the directional light, the sky atmosphere, and the skylight from our scene so we can work with new components from scratch. As you can see, that already got rid of all the lighting in our world, except for the lights we added in our last video. You can still see sky sphere in the sky, so you still have the clouds. Now, let's add the sky atmosphere component to our scene. Head over to the Place Actors panel, go to All Classes, and then search for Sky. And here you will find the Sky Atmosphere and Skylight. Go ahead and drag the Sky Atmosphere component into your scene and drop. Now nothing is going to happen yet because we deleted our directional light. So next, we need to make sure our light source is enabled. If you haven't played around with lights in Unreal, I'd recommend going back to our last tutorial in which we covered the fundamentals of lighting in UE5. But for now, go back to the Place Actors panel, clear out your search, click on the little light bulb, and then take the directional light and drag and drop it into your scene. With the light selected, go to the details panel and search for atmosphere sunlight. Make sure that it is enabled. If you are using a second sunlight like a moon or possibly your planet or your world has two suns or three suns, you will want to come down here and change the atmosphere sunlight index to whichever index the sun would have. So let's say we we're adding a moon to our scene and we would change the sunlight index to a one. And you can already see in the distance that the atmosphere is affected by changing the index, but let's keep it at zero for now. And next, you're gonna add a skylight to capture and contribute to the scene's lighting for a complete atmospheric effect. This helps create more cohesive and realistic lighting environment. So we'll go back to the Place Actors panel, all classes, once again, search for sky and add the skylight to your scene. Now, while the skylight is still enabled, you can either choose enable the real-time capture, which means that any changes you do to your atmosphere will update in real time, or you can manually do that down here. As you scroll down, you go to skylight and then recapture scene and you simply click recapture whenever you do some changes. But for you to see anything that happens on screen, let's go ahead and enable real-time capture. And because I don't like it all sitting here at one spot, let's move it to the center of the world and move it into our lighting folder. Now let's choose the sky atmosphere. Let's also zero that out real quick. Let's also select the directional light. Also center it and start looking up at the sky. UE5's sky atmosphere excels in simulating different times of day. You can adjust the sun's position by rotating the directional light and watch as your sky transitions from day to night, showcasing beautiful sunsets and sunrises. So hit E on the keyboard to change to the rotation gizmo and then just pick one direction and start rotating it. And you can see the shadows start to lengthen as the sun is starting to rotate on its x-axis and the lower we bring it our atmosphere and our sky is starting to change to now be more of a sunset we can continue to bring it down until we hit nighttime go ahead and bring it all the way around and then we start having sunrise We can just keep that cycle going. Cycle through day and night. With a simple rotation of your directional light. But for now, let's bring it back up. I think this is a good angle. Let's rotate on the Z a little bit. And I want the sun to be located somewhere else in the sky. All right. And you can see that small dot right there behind the clouds 
All right, now the clouds covered it up, so let's bring it up just a little bit. There we go. As we talked about in the last video, there's several settings you can change in the directional light. So you can change the settings by simply changing the source angle, which will then give you a bigger sun or a much smaller sun. This in turn will affect the shadows of your world as well. You can also increase the brightness or turn down the brightness. But let's leave the brightness at default, but let's leave the sun source angle at a 2.88 just so we can see it in our sky. Now let's drag the directional light also into the lighting because we'll be done with this for now. And then select our sky atmosphere. And if your details panel does not populate, just come up here under the sky atmosphere component, click on it, and that should bring all the details into it. Now keep in mind, the sky atmosphere isn't just for Earth-like environments. By adjusting the Rayleigh and MIE scattering, we can create alien or exotic atmospheres. This is where you can get creative and define the unique look of your world. So let's scroll down our details panel and find the atmosphere Rayleigh. And out just a little bit, expand the settings. All right, so for Rayleigh scattering, this is what makes the sky look blue during the day. It happens when light interacts with small particles like air molecules in the atmosphere. Shorter wavelengths of blue light are scattered more than other colors. That's why we see a blue sky, but during sunrise and sunset the light path through the atmosphere is longer, so most of the blue light gets scattered out before reaching our eyes, leaving behind beautiful reds, oranges, and yellows. So what you can also do is just go into the scattering scale and start changing it. And as you move up, you can already see that the color's starting to change because the way the light enters the atmosphere now becomes a lot more scattered due to the small particles it's hitting on the way. We can also change it down. If we bring it down to zero, it will just take out any of the color that comes in, only let in the light itself. You can also change the color itself that you want it to filter. So instead of the blue, let's instead only filter out green light. And now you can see that in the sky, more green light is filtered and we have more of the reds coming through on the ground because the blue is being filtered out a lot more at this point. Same goes for the reds. If you just increase the red, now you let more red light coming through and then the green will start bouncing off while the blue light is being filtered out. Let's go ahead and reset that, find a nice atmosphere setting that we like. Next, let's talk about MIE scattering. MIE scattering occurs when light hits larger particles like dust, pollen, or pollution. This type of scattering causes the sky to appear hazy and can create bright halos around light sources like the sun. It scatters light more forward compared to Rayleigh scattering. MIE scattering is crucial for simulating the effect of a hazy or polluted atmosphere. So right underneath Rayleigh, we will have the MIE scattering. And the same principle applies here. We can take the scale, simply increase it, and you can already see that there's a lot more fog covering the directional light that we have in our scene. To the point that we even block out the sun entirely, and all we have is a grayed out scene. This reminds me a lot of Silent Hill, to be honest. All we need is a little more volumetric fog, and we would pretty much recreate that right here. We can also change the color of the scattering. So let's say there's a lot of red particles in our sky. The way it breaks through, the sky will be lit a lot more red and we have a lot more blue and green here in our world. We can also change the absorption scale. See how much light the particles actually absorb in this case, almost all of it. And you can see just a little bit of the sunlight left in the sky. And then lastly, Underneath the atmosphere MIE, we also have the atmosphere absorption. Then here, you can also increase the absorption scale. And this will basically absorb whatever color light you have selected in your absorption and will only let the other colors through. So in this case, we have more of a purple, pink from the blue and red coming through because all of the green is being filtered out. But we can change that to where now the red starts getting filtered out and only the blue and green can get through. And then same if we change it. Now we have more of the purple being filtered, so more of the greens and yellows are starting to shine through into our world. And this is how you can create some really astonishing and alien looking atmospheres in your game world, depending on your creative needs. And that's your introduction to the sky atmosphere in Unreal Engine 5. From serene Earth-like settings to alien worlds, the possibilities are endless. If you enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more UE5 content. Thanks for joining me today, stay tuned for more, and until next time, keep exploring 
keep it unreal.